Now, as we prepare for Easter, this, this subject lesson, this story today, this Bible story is right before, amen, Jesus, right before Jesus is crucified, amen. And this is taking place right before what we have learned to become the Last Supper. And it deals with, today's message deals with the word betrayal. Amen? Betrayal. And so you ask yourself, what is betrayal, preacher? Well, betrayal is an abandonment or a violation of trust by someone who is close to you. Amen? I'm sure all of us have seen a wife, amen, who has been betrayed by her husband. Some of us may even know a husband who has been betrayed by his wife, a father who has been betrayed by his children, or even a mother who may have been betrayed by her children. An employee, a man, a co-worker, or maybe even, it may even be you that was passed over for a promotion at work, although they had promised it to you. A secret that you shared with some friends that one of them put your secret out. Amen. A promise made to a child that was so easily broken by a parent. Brothers and sisters falling out over possessions left by their parents. And yes, church family, even brothers and sisters within the body of Christ, even sowing discord between each other in the Lord's house. Each and every one of us at some point in our lives have been betrayed. Each of us have been rejected and, and abandoned by somebody very close to us, somebody who we trusted closely with secrets. Somebody who we trusted with our struggles. Somebody whom we even trusted to share with them the victories that we've had in our life. This pain of betrayal is always intense and it's always very hurtful. Usually, usually, it is someone that we have done a whole lot for. Somebody whom we would go to the very end of the world for. Someone whom we trusted with close, close-kept secrets. Someone whom we've defended at times. Some someone whom we've protected at times. And yes, even someone that we've even fed, that's eaten at our table. Some that we, someone that we have even given clothing to, given money to. And yes, sometimes even somebody that we have provided care for. And so we begin to ask ourselves, how in the world could they do this to me? What did I do to ever deserve this? Oh, church family, ladies, you, 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 ladies, you might call these folks your BFF. You might call them your sister. And sometimes you might even call them your girl. Gentlemen, you might call them your road dog. You might call them your tight man or even your homeboy. Someone you might describe as being in your inner circle. But church family, I stopped by this morning just for a little while to let you know that just because somebody is in your circle, that doesn't mean that they are in your corner. See, Judas, Judas was in Jesus' inner circle. But we all know how that turned out. So now you ask yourself, for those of you all who may not be familiar with this text or familiar with Judas, you ask yourself, well, preacher, who is this Judas? Judas is first mentioned in the 10th chapter of Matthew, where a list of the 12 disciples were listed. And in these disciples, Jesus gave them special gifts, and they became Jesus's closest companions. Now we know that several hundred people were following Jesus at any given time. And there were 72 disciples that Jesus sent out to do 
his ministry work. But the 12 disciples, see, they were in his inner circle. And they were closer to Jesus than any of the others. Peter, James, and John spent a lot spent lots of individual time with Jesus. And the Gospel of John mentions the disciples that Jesus loved several times. Now how close Judas was to Jesus isn't clear. But we know that he sat right beside him, Lord have mercy, at the Last Supper. In this passage of Scripture this morning, church family, we find Jesus and the disciples in the upper room having what we have come to learn to be the Last Supper. And in verse 21 of Matthew 26, Jesus announces to the disciples that one of them would betray him. The disciples were shocked and saddened that Jesus would make such a statement and a prediction. Each of them began to ask, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus replied, The one of you that dip your hand into the bowl with me will betray me. And yes, even Judas asked the question, knowing full well that he was the one that would betray Jesus. See, Judas had already accepted the 30 pieces of silver to turn Jesus over to the chief priest. And see, Jesus knew all of this. But Jesus' answer to Judas was just simply, you have said so. See, again, Judas was in the inner circle. Of Jesus. He was one of the 12 disciples. Judas had been with Jesus for three years watching the miracles that Jesus was performing in people's lives. In fact, Judas was the treasurer of the group. He handled all of the money. So Judas had to be in a place of trust with the other disciples if they trusted him, amen, to handle the money. Yet he was the one that sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Now many have asked, how could could Judas do such a thing after being in Jesus' inner circle all this time? How he walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus and prayed with Jesus and watched Jesus perform miracles. How could Judas do that to Jesus? But you see, Judas didn't see Jesus as the Messiah. Because, see, if he had seen him that way, he wouldn't have done what he did to him. See, like many of our so-called friends, Judas was an opportunist. See, remember, this is the same Judas that became angry when the woman with the alabaster box poured the expensive oil on on, on Jesus. Judas said that she was just wasting that expensive oil. He said that, y'all, we, we, we could have sold that oil and, and, and taken the money and given it to the poor. See, Judas was showing them right then who he was. But see, no one paid any attention to him. See, people show us all the time who they are, but we just refuse to see it and refuse, Lord have mercy, to accept it. The great poet, Maya Angelou, once said, when people show you who they are, The first time, believe them. Many of the people who have betrayed us showed us who they were, but we refused to believe them or accept it. So we began to make excuses for these individuals. We thought maybe they were having a bad day. We say to ourselves, clearly, they're not that kind of person. Well, he or she wouldn't do that to me. See, she's my sister. She's my BFF, my BFF. She's my homegirl. See, he's my road dog, my brother of another mother, my tight man. He or she is in my inner circle, but they are not in my corner. See, church family, everybody that's in your circle ain't in your corner. Somebody ought to say glory, hallelujah. I believe the OJs said it best in their hit song, Backstabbers. Yeah, I'm going there. They smile in your face all the time they want to take your place, Backstabbers. The OJs went on to say a few of your buddies sure look shady. The blades are long, clutched tight in their fists, aiming straight at your back, and I don't think they'll miss. See, church family, we put too much faith 
in men and women. See, we've got to learn to trust God. We've got to learn to put God first in our lives. Yes, I said it. Put God first in your life. God comes before your husband. God comes before your wife. God comes before your children. God comes before your parents. God comes before your job. We must learn to put God first in our lives and everything else will fall in place. Church family, men and women will disappoint you every time. But my God will always be there. He said in his word that he will never leave us or forsake us, that he will always be with us until the end. See, one of the things that I've discovered about the church is that we like to see Judas in others. Church family, I've noticed this about people. We can see the Judas in others. We like to point out how others are disappointing Jesus. We like to point out the lack of Christ in others. We gladly share how somebody else is not living right. We are quick to point the faults of others while overlooking our own. But I believe it was Matthew chapter 7 verse 3 that says, To first take the beam out of your own eye before you try to remove the speck out of your brother's and sister's eyes. Judge yourself first. But now church family, you know what? We will never get right. We'll never get right with God with that kind of thinking, judging other people. Anytime we present ourselves as a finished product, we are on the wrong path. So instead of being concerned about others, we should examine ourselves first. What we do best is deceive ourselves into thinking that we are all right and everything and everybody else is all wrong. And see, when we do this, the truth becomes increasingly distant from our lives. We begin to live lies instead of the truth. But Jesus beckons us to confront the truth of our wayward ways. For his truth and his love, they go together. Trust family, his arms are wide open for us today. See that morsel of bread that he extended to the disciples at the Last Supper is also being offered to you and I today. His friendship is being offered to us today, even in the midst of our failures and our sins. You see, we must face, we must face the fact that we ourselves have some betrayals. Because each one of our sins is a betrayal of God and his will for us. And, we, and when we become repetitive with our sin, it places us directly against God. See, as a result, we become increasingly resistant. Amen. We become increasingly hostile. Amen. For Judas, one of the deciding factors for him was his love of money. Lord have mercy. Love of money. And we still have that same love of money today. People will tell lies for money. People will compromise their values for money. People have even killed for money. People will prostitute their bodies for money. Families have split up over money. Enemies are made over money. And I'm going back to the OJs again, y'all. The OJs say some people got to have it. Some people really need it. They'll do things, do things, do real bad things with it. Money can drive some people out of their minds. Do not be deceived, church man, family, by the love of money. The love of money may be causing you to betray Jesus right now. Please do not be deceived. Do not deceive yourself this morning. See, you can consistently come to church. You can sing songs of Zion with uplifting voices. We can teach the truth of God's word. We can even give a portion of our salary. We can help and serve others and still leave her hidden in the darkness. Yes, we choose daily to live in light or darkness. My question to you this morning, church family, is where are you living today? Are you living in the light with Jesus or are you in the darkness with Satan? Who are you serving today? Whose circle, whose circle are you in today? Better yet, who is in your circle today? Because everybody that's in your circle ain't necessarily in your corner. 
But oh, church family, I'm so glad this morning that I know who is in my corner because I am in his circle and he is in my circle. But most importantly, because I'm in his circle, Lord have mercy, he's in my corner. Oh, is there anybody in the house today that knows who I'm talking about? Is there anybody in the house today that knows that name? Well, just in case you don't, church family, I'm going to give you a little hint. His name is Jesus. Amen. Oh, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Oh, he is the A and the Z, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is coming. He is the almighty one. He is the prince of peace, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the bread of life. He is my deliverer. He is my comforter. He is my protector. He is my defender. Oh, I'm talking about the king of all kings, the precious lamb of God, the light of this world. He is my rock, my sword, and my shield. Oh, I found him to be a battle axe at the time of war. Oh, I found him to be water when I've been thirsty, food when I've been hungry, and shelter in the midst of a storm. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one else could heal all my soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Because you see, Jesus knows all my struggles. And he said that he will guide me till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Church family, Everybody this morning that's in your circle ain't necessarily in your corner. But oh, we got a friend named Jesus. And all you got to do is just call on him when you go through trials and tribulations. All you got to do is call on his name when you're going through chaos and inconvenience. Oh, I dare you right now. I dare you right now to shout the name of Jesus three times. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, oh, didn't that make you feel good? Amen. Jesus, 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 there's power in the name of Jesus. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal. All our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus 